I just want to showcase a little something from a Gabble uh, with the Zapier integration. You know, maybe some folks out there find this helpful. So first things first, uh, I need to be able to set up a webhook into Zapier to be able to send documents and other data in, into Zapier so I can do stuff with it. Because the goal here is not just to create a document, but to send it through uh, various channels. Um, so I set up my webhook, webhooks inside of here. So if I go over to Zapier, just to walk you through these steps. Uh, so it's going to first catch the uh, the hook, gather all that data. I have this conditional statement because there's a demo version and then there's the, the regular production version. Uh, so it just differentiates between those. Then what it's going to do is because Gavel is going to create a packet in a zip, I need to be able to extract that zip. And so I'm going to do that through this convert API. Um, and then what it's going to do from there is now that it's going to you know convert from zip and extract it and pull all the the gobbledygook out uh, i next need to be able to perform an action with uh the utilities formatter inside of zapier which is just the native function to take those different file names that it's going to pull out and uh, grab the pdf out of there and that's how that happens um, after I have that, I just want to be able to save the file somewhere. And so I uploaded in my Google Apps for Work uh, file drive where it's going to store it and add a naming convention to it uh, and then update the file sharing preferences. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to create a row inside of a Google Sheet. So I just store everything in this uh, this spreadsheet that I have you know, for various bits of prevention data under generated documents. And I just ID it, you know, the date down to the second, I just format that in CST and then just the, the tenant's last name. Uh, there's some other little parts that I populate inside of here, namely the document link. I'm going to need that uh, just to be able to look at it for later. And then inside of the flow, inside of uh, Gavel, there's some consents that the uh, the tenant slash user will will go through where it's going to say, do you want intervention to email it on your behalf, to mail it on your behalf, or to text it? Uh, and so just to get the thumbs up from the tenant on what to be able to do. So once it has those uh, those automated functions checked off, then it can go through the paths. So the first one is for mailing. Uh, so here, right, it's going to first determine, you know, I'm only going to continue if automated mail is true. It's going to send it by certified and regular mail uh, through LOB, uh, which is just a really friendly way of sending this stuff. Uh, so it goes to LOB. It's going to start populating a bunch of this data to be able to send it out. And then here's the one for first class mail. It's going to do the next one for certified mail, and it's going to get the return receipt. Well, now that you have that handy dandy tracking information, the next thing it can do is uh, send the tracking information to the tenant via Gmail, again, using Google Apps for work, and uh, give them the tracking information. Now they got all that. The next one, if the tenant elects to do it, and this one's fairly simple, is if the automated email is true, then it will send an email to the landlord uh, and give some information about the, the tenant. Uh, it BCCs me on the these communications just so I can be, you know, for debugging purposes, uh, but it'll CC the tenant on there and just say, you know, here's a letter from your tenant and, uh, you know, you can work with your tenant from there. Finally, for texting, uh, you know, a lot of tenants text their landlords. So what I do here is, again, get the consent because they have to be able to, the tenant has to be able to agree to get text messages, whereas the other two, we're sending them directly to the landlord. I can't really send it to the landlord via text because that, I think that would be a, an FCC problem. So what it'll do is um, I just do this little formula. I do a random between, like you're really not going to get any uh, number that's going to duplicate here. Uh, so I, I, I run a formula. And then once I run that formula, I'm going to put this through uh, Cloud Convert, which is a really helpful program that is going to take the file that it outputted from uh, that Convert API and uh, create some file names out of there. And so it's using that uh, unique number that it generated just a second ago and create a file name. So it'll take it from a PDF and put it into an image file, and then I can text it. 
but these letters are going to have multiple pages. So the next thing I need to be able to do is then format that text again, all similar to what I did before with the file names out of the document that I converted. And I want to split those text, uh, uh, snippets of text, because then that's going to give me all my file names, because it's going to be like, you know, letter one.png, letter two.png for each page. And now I know that the letters are going to be a three pages at a minimum. That's just the way the, uh, some of these repairs letters go. So uh, now it can take the information and, you know, here's it just sending a text from a number that I have through Twilio. So it's reaching out to Twilio, it's adding the media URL for that PNG file, and then it's giving, you know, saying here's page one. And it goes all the way down the line until it sees if there's some other uh, pages that are added on here where it will, uh, you just do conditionals and then send any additional pages up to six pages to the tenant. And then they can take all those images and forward them to their landlord. Hope you found this helpful.